I help thousands of people learn how to use their Holly EFI systems, so I get to see firsthand the mistakes, problems, issues, and all of the different misunderstandings that people have on a daily basis. Sometimes people are even nice enough to thank me for my efforts by sending me really nice emails like this one when I offer to help them for free through email instead of a phone call. Keep it classy, Mississippi. Anyways, in this video, we are going to take a look at a few things that people either don't understand or maybe misunderstand when it comes to purchasing and using their Holly Terminator X. Some of this will apply to snipers and some of the other systems as well, but primarily Terminator X. Okay, first thing we're going to do here is take a look at Holly's website as if we were going to purchase a Terminator X or X Max kit for our car. Now we're here on Holly's site, so we'll just click on Terminator X. And if we look at all these different kits, uh, you can see we have Ford kits, Hemi kits, LS kits, and if we click on one. And once you click on this, you can see that there are uh, Terminator X kits and Terminator X Max kits. The ECUs are different between the two. If we jump in here into one of the kits, you can see that these appear to be very engine specific. We have, you know, engine sizes, what they came out of, which cam, which crank, which injectors. So ultimately it ends up appearing as if it is very application specific. Now what I have learned kind of to my surprise is that when people are ordering these kits, they think that the actual ECU is specific to the engine or the combination that they ordered it for. And that is just not the case at all. The ECUs for the kits are exactly the same. You know, the Terminator X is its own, they have their own kits and the X Maxes have their own kits as their two separate ECUs. But the difference with these kits is typically just the wiring harnesses, uh, maybe some adapters or an ECU bracket or things of that nature. But uh, again, people don't understand that the ECU itself is exactly the same between all of the different kits. And you're probably thinking, why does this matter? Uh, there's a lot of different reasons, you know, as simple as people will pass up on maybe a used DCU because they don't think it's going to work for their particular engine. They think it's set up for another one. But the primary thing and uh, the, the whole reason of mentioning this in this video really is that I have lost count on how many people have contacted me that their car won't start. What the fuck? And after you ask them all the questions to figure out what they did or didn't do is they're thinking that when they order these particular kits, that the ECU is programmed for their setup already, which is another kind of part of the problem with the self-tuning thing. So long story short, they're not ever connecting a laptop to it to upload a file, and they're never using the handheld to upload a file to it. So they're ultimately trying to start a car with a completely blank ECU. So you can imagine everybody is frustration uh, if they're in that boat. So again, if this video helps one person not make the mistake, then it was worth it. Okay, let's jump into the Terminator X software real quick and take a look at a couple of other things that seem to throw people for a loop. All right, so if we come here into the main setup under engine parameters, you can see right here that for the wideband O2 sensor type, we only have one option, which is the Bosch 4.9. The Terminator X and the Sniper both use the 4.9. They do not and cannot use the Bosch 4.2 or the NTK sensor that the HP and Dominator ECUs can use. So this is something that you need to understand before you buy your Terminator X ECU, as I've had people literally get mad at me is if I made the damn ECU myself that the Terminator X can't run an NTK sensor and they say things like, I never would have bought this if I knew it couldn't have used the NTK. And that's why you have to do your research on things beforehand and not just assume things. So again, hopefully this video will help a couple of people not make that mistake. On the topic of O2 sensors, another thing that will probably the biggest thing that people get upset about when they purchase a Terminator X kit, if they didn't do their research ahead of time, is if you look here, wideband O2, I said I showed you before, we only have the option here for 4.9. There's no other stuff that you can change or adjust. But if we jump into the Holly EFI software for the HPs and Dominators, uh, you can see we have Bosch and NTK. Surprisingly, it doesn't show you that this Bosch is a 4.2, which is different. Uh, it has the option for the NTK, which is my favorite sensor. But uh, the big thing here is we have the option for one or two O2 sensors. And uh, once you select two, uh, you can change kind of uh, how it wants to average. And this is where so many people just completely flip out thinking that they desperately need two O2 sensors, uh, you know, on a, on a V8 engine or whatever. So you have two different banks. So, well, one, if you're using a single turbo, uh, you're just going to have a single O2 sensor in the downpipe anyway, since there's only one, you can tune the car just fine that way. Uh, but people think that since you're not monitoring both banks of the engine, that the whole system is unusable or whatever. But 
Oh, that couldn't be any further from the truth. I would say you really only need one sensor and the second one, in a perfect world, if you had both, great. But more often than not, it confuses people when they have two different air fuel values and they don't know what to do with either one. But more importantly, as long as you have good injectors and everything with the engine is running right, you shouldn't have a drastically big difference uh, bank to bank. So 102 sensor is perfectly fine. I've tuned hundreds, if not a thousand cars with two different banks of the engine only using one oxygen sensor. So with all that being said, just be aware if you are buying a Terminator X uh, that you're only going to have one O2 sensor. So a lot of people don't understand that the Terminator X is an entry level ECU at less than half the cost of a Dominator. So it's not going to have every single feature and bell and whistle that the Dominator has. If you want all of that stuff, then the Dominator may be a better option for you, even though it does cost a little bit extra money. I made a video comparing all of the different Holly ECUs. I'll try and throw that on the screen here. So the good part about the Bosch 4.9 is that they are very inexpensive compared to other options and that you can usually buy the 4.9 at any auto parts store. Going back to the people not fully understanding things is that you do not have to buy your 4.9 O2 sensor for your Sniper or your Terminator X from Holly. Any of these part numbers on the screen right now will work and you can buy them just about anywhere. So screenshot this image if you wanna save it. Just be careful buying from places like Amazon or eBay as counterfeit sensors are actually very common, believe it or not. Okay, next, this is one of those things that ruins a lot of people's lives and it's probably one of the biggest decisions that you have to make when it comes to EFI outside of buying the ECU itself and that is choosing fuel injectors. Okay, so a few things about fuel injectors. If you do not want to have to manually enter in all of your fuel injector data, which is kind of all this stuff you're seeing here, all your different pressures, flow rates, minimum opening times, all of that good stuff, then your best bet is going to be to buy a set of injectors that is actually in this uh, list of injectors right here. So if you buy this set of injectors and you click on it, you can see that all of the data changes and populates for you. So that is without a doubt the easiest option. Now, if you want to use a set of injectors that is not in the drop down menu, before you buy your injectors, and I can't stress that enough, is before you buy them, contact the manufacturer of the injectors you wanna buy and make sure that it comes with injector data and preferably Holly EFI specific data. If there's no injector data available for the injectors that you want, simply do not buy them. It's really that black and white and that easy of a decision. Uh, if they don't have Holly specific data, you can work around that. As long as they have something that's based off of a, a time and a battery voltage, uh, then you can usually convert that over to the Holly stuff pretty easy. It will take a little bit of extra work, but it's still totally doable. But almost any reputable Man injector manufacturer is going to have Holly specific data since Holly is such a popular ECU. And with all that being said, if you choose to buy injectors that don't have injector data and you can't get the car to run correctly, uh, just don't blame anybody or anything other than yourself. I'm a dumbass. I'm a dumbass. Also worth mentioning and totally underrated is that not all injectors or injector data is created equal. So I totally understand that everybody is looking for the most cost-effective options, especially nowadays, but injectors are one of those things that you do not want to skimp on. Also, believe it or not, probably 90% of the injectors on the market nowadays are just some cheap Chinese crap that they put a you know fancy sticker on the injector, maybe they put them in a fancy box, and then they 10X the price. Uh, they basically make up or even steal injector data from under other manufacturers because, you know, let's be honest, who's going to go out and buy a set of inexpensive fuel injectors and then before installing them, send them out to have them flowed, check for accuracy, pairing and verify the latency and everything else. Uh, I don't think anybody's gonna do that. So they can sell you garbage and get away from it because you're never gonna call them out on it. So the goal is obviously to get all of this injector data correct, but at the end of the day, Holly is not nearly as picky about this as like some OEM ECUs, for example. So if you have maybe not perfect injector data, but at least something in the ballpark, then you know your VE numbers in your table might be a little bit off. Your fuel flow calculations might be a little bit off. So if you're trying to calculate your horsepower, for example, based off of your fuel consumption, uh, then you're gonna get inaccurate numbers you know, in that regard. But at the end of the day, if you have something that's close, you can work with it usually to get it to work. But if you're expecting closed loop and learn to save you in these situations, uh, it's going to leave you pretty disappointed. It's definitely going to require manual tuning 
if you want to get it to run when you don't have all of the proper data. Also worth noting, the larger the injectors, uh, the more important all of this stuff becomes because then very small percentage changes uh, become actually drastically different in terms of the fuel that's delivered to the engine. And if you're new to all of this and you want to put a set of gigantic injectors in, you don't have data, you're going to have a really rough time. So with all that being said, just do yourself a favor and buy a nice set of injectors from the get go uh, from a company that specializes in fuel injectors specifically is usually how I go about that. Uh, I have sold injector dynamics and fuel injector clinic exclusively for the last probably 15 years or something. OEM injectors are actually a great choice too. Uh, as long as they're large enough to meet your power goals. Usually the OEM injectors are, tend to be smaller, so they're not going to be capable of making as much power. And I guess with that being said, don't just guess on an injector size. There's an endless amount of fuel injector calculators online if you just Google them. Uh, so you can input either the size of injector that you want to use, and it will tell you how much horsepower it's capable of, or some of the other ones you can type in horsepower goal, and then it will tell you what size injector to use. I always recommend going a little bit larger than what you need on injectors because we're all idiots. We're never satisfied and we always end up turning the boost up a couple extra pounds or whatever the case may be. And you're going to be happy that your injectors have a little bit of room to grow. Oh, and on the note of OEM injectors, when I say OEM, I mean actual OEM, not just some rock auto knockoff OEM ish injectors. So just make sure the actual OEM injectors, you know, maybe somebody took their injectors out of their hellcat or whatever and uh, you can buy those from them um, i tend to be very cautious with buying used injectors uh, sometimes if the injectors just sit around for a long time even out of the car you can run into problems with that uh, you can't trust people to tell you it's one thing is actually something else uh, so i tend to buy new or if i do buy used i tend to buy them from or recommend buying them from somebody that you know personally so that way if there's problems then you guys can get that taken care of and I guess while we're on the topic of fuel system, uh, do yourself a favor and buy a fuel pump and a regulator from a company that only makes fuel system components. The amount of fuel pump failures and fuel pressure regulator failures that I've seen on the dyno over the years is in the multi hundreds, if not thousands. It's so much cheaper and better in the long run to just buy the nice stuff up front. And that way you don't have to go back to the dyno two, three, four times or waste tons of time troubleshooting trying to figure out why nothing's working the way that it's supposed to okay another one that i see all of the time if we jump back into the software here and we go into sensors uh, this map sensor right here is one of the most important sensors on the engine and if you use the internal one bar map sensor you cannot use this if it's forced induction if there's any boost it won't work so be aware of that now, a lot of people do ask on a regular basis if they should use the internal one bar sensor on the ECU or if they should use, you know, like the one bar sensor on their engine that it came with. I've had great success with both. As long as they work and they're functioning properly, either one should be fine. I tend to use the one on the engine when possible, just because there's already a connector for it in the engine harness and you can just plug it in and you don't have to run a vacuum line uh, to wherever the ECU is, which is usually in the car. It's just one more potential thing to get cut going through the firewall or melt or whatever the case may be. But the same thing here applies that applied to the fuel injectors. If you have a forced induction application and you need to run a bigger map sensor than a one bar, the easiest thing to do is to choose one of the options in this drop down menu. Then again, if you had a Holly three and a half bar, you click on it and you're done. But if you want to run a sensor that is not in this drop down menu, uh, you need to make sure that it comes with data. And then you would go to a custom setup and you're gonna need to have the sensor voltage down here and what the map sensor is actually gonna read at those voltages up here. So I must get 50 emails a week of people asking me if I know the data for all these off the wall map sensors. I don't. If the sensor that you wanna buy isn't on the drop down list, make sure that it includes data. And if it doesn't, don't buy it. Map sensors are extremely important and they're actually very inexpensive. I guess that's somewhat subjective, but if you're unsure on data or you're trying to just use a random map sensor that you've found in your toolbox and you don't have the data for it, just do yourself a favor and buy a map sensor that actually has data. Like, I don't know, my time is more valuable than trying to make some sensor work for six months, trying to guess and figure out 
searching, searching Google endlessly to, to try and find data for it. Just buy a sensor that you know is going to work. And then also, if it is an off the wall sensor and it fails, you're going to have a hard time finding that sensor. So you're probably just going to buy another sensor and end up having to change all the data anyway. So I would encourage you to buy a sensor that's readily available. And uh, that way, you know, a hundred ish dollars or whatever, some of the OEM ones are even half the price of that. Uh, then you don't have to deal with all of the struggles that come along with using a sensor that you don't have data for. Probably the most dangerous misconception that people have with Terminator X, especially for those that are switching from an OEM ECU or using HP tuners or something like that, is thinking that they can rely on the Holly not control to tune the ignition timing. Or even worse is thinking that they don't need to do anything with the ignition timing because they think that the ECU is self-tuning and they think that the knock sensors and the ignition timing tuning is part of that self-tuning equation, which I can't stress to you enough, it is not. So if you look at this in our ignition setup here, uh, you can see that we have a knock sensor type, so you can have one or two wire, how many, and then you have a frequency and a sensitivity. But uh, there is no curve, there is no further adjustability. And if we go into our knock control here, you can see that you can change the amount of timing that it's going to pull and how fast it's going to reapply the timing after it pulls it. But again, there's just no adjustability. So if you go back, uh, so we do have a frequency, which is typically like a set value based off of engine size, things like that. Uh, but the sensitivity here is the big problem. If this was an adjustable curve, then maybe it would be worthwhile, but you can't really have just a blanket sensitivity value because engine noise is drastically different at 1500 rpm as it is at 8000 rpm so in my opinion uh, holly has just enough not control uh if you even really want to be able to call it that to be able to say that it has not control but both from the software side and the logging side there just isn't really enough there for it to be worthwhile or usable at least in my opinion now, even if the knock control was good, knock control on a standalone ECU requires setup, programming, and fine tuning. So you essentially have to tune the knock sensors before you can use them for tuning. And kind of what I found is a lot of people think that they're just going to use the knock sensors to do the tuning. Uh, they tend to not have the experience with tuning ignition timing in order to be able to set up and tune the knock sensors. Uh, beforehand, so to speak. So that probably sounds a little bit confusing, but uh, you have to be able to know how to identify and introduce knock in order to calibrate and tell the knock sensors when knock is happening. I'm not going to go into this uh, super deep because it's kind of confusing trying to explain it without any visual uh, representation, but I do have uh, videos where we put an external knock monitor on a Holly car. Uh, in my training course and we show kind of how all of this works and you can see what I mean about uh, programming the knock sensors first. Now I really do hope that Holly improves their whole knock control side of things on their ECUs one day but for the time being for those of you considering buying a Holly system I just want you to be aware that you can't just let the knock sensors take the wheel and expect it to self-tune or even to use the knock sensors to tune your ignition table. If you try and do that, you're probably just going to blow yourself up. Now it's totally possible that there's other people that have had a totally different experience with Holly's not control than I have, but I don't know a single person that tunes on a regular basis or professionally that relies on or even uses Holly's not control. I'd say best case scenario, the way that the Holly's not control is set up would be to use it more as a safety net than to use it as an actual tool for tuning, if that makes sense. So these are just a few of the things that I see people struggling with when it comes to their Terminator X systems. If you want to learn how to set up and use your Holly EFI system yourself, check out either of these videos on the screen or check out the links in the description to either our paid online training, our free trainings that we send through email, or our Holly EFI beginners Facebook group that just hit 15,000 members.